Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Sasquatch Theory. In this episode, we have Jim from Lake of the Ozarks, and of course, he wants to share his Bigfoot encounters that he experienced throughout his life. People are rising up all around North America, and they're wanting to share their Bigfoot encounters. All we want is a simple yes, they exist, but we're not even getting that. And of course, people are going to ask more questions, even if we are given that answer, but the people deserve to know. If you have had a Bigfoot encounter in the past and you want to share it with me on the channel, feel free to contact me by email or social media. You can find links down in the description below. Guys, I really want to get out in the woods and spend as much time as possible, but the weather has been really nasty here and it's supposed to be down in the single digits at nighttime. I don't want to make excuses, but I haven't seen too much activity when the weather is nasty outside, and I think the wildlife and Sasquatch like to hunker down when the weather is like this. Just like us, but I have seen Sasquatch move around when it gets really windy outside, and I think it helps them conceal their footsteps and movement. I have a few guests that want to tell their Bigfoot and Cryptid encounters on film, so I am extremely excited about that, and I know the good Lord is watching out over me and all of you guys. If you guys want to see more content and gain access to special perks, you can join my YouTube membership channel, and that would really help me out a lot. I have recently joined the Amazon affiliate program, so you guys will see me out in the woods more talking about products that I use researching Bigfoot. A lot of what I use is pretty basic stuff as far as the hunting and camping gear. I think a lot of people will really like to see what I use, and I want you guys to know that I'm going to give my honest opinion about everything. So I am an Amazon affiliate now, and you guys will have to look in the links when you guys see me talking about certain products I am using. If you guys can, please like and subscribe, and of course, if you have been unsubscribed from the channel, be sure to resubscribe, and also take a screenshot of the proof and the YouTube version that you are using on your TV or smartphone and send it over to me because YouTube said they need proof that this is happening. Also do this if you are unable to post a comment. All right, guys, let's get into this next Bigfoot encounter with Jim from Lake of the Ozarks, and he's had a lot of cryptid encounters all over Missouri. All right, Jim. Welcome to Sasquatch Theory. How are you doing today, sir? I'm good. Good, good to hear. You've had some encounters and experiences in the Lake of the Ozarks area. If you would, tell me a little bit about yourself and these encounters and experiences that you've had. Okay. Well, I may uh I moved down here to the lake in probably 2021. I uh, brought a car dealership with me, used car dealership in uh set up right outside of Lori, Missouri, and uh, never never really realized what was going on around here till the past four or five years. I've had some other experiences before that. Uh, when I was a kid, I guess I should start with my first experiences, and then uh, I'll work my way up to what I've noticed down here at the lake since I've been here. Sounds good to me. Okay. The... Uh, the first weird thing that happened, my dad was a avid hunter back in the 70s and stuff. I grew up in St. Charles County, lived uh, close to the Missouri River. My dad used to uh, deer hunt on my uncle's farm over in Maryland Heights, Missouri. And uh, come home one night, uh, come home early. He always stayed out, get home 10 o'clock at night in the dark, pitch dark, he'd come home. But this night he came home early and uh, said that there was somebody in his field. And uh, we all sat around, we're little kids, probably 12 years old, listening to his story. He said there's a big, big, tall, dark uh, guy standing at the other end of a winter wheat field. And he said he'd come out in the field, and the guy just standing there on the edge of the field in the brush looking at him. said he thought it was another hunter, so he whistled at him. He said there's no response, just stood there and looked at him. So uh, he said he whistled again and waved his arm trying to let the guy know that he was there. And he said pretty soon he realized it wasn't a guy. And he said his hair kind of stood up, and he'd done a U-turn and uh, went back to the farmhouse down an old slough bed 
And he said the thing followed him out of there, cracking branches and huffing and puffing and scared the shit out of him. So uh, that was the first story. Later, um, this is just a couple months later, after this had happened, directly across the river from where this happened, um, I lived I lived on Junk Station Road in uh, in the River Bottoms. Was called Greens Bottoms there. We had a snow day, and uh, we were off school, and a friend of mine came over to the house with his BB gun, and we were going to go on an adventure down to the river. So uh, I grabbed my BB gun and bundled up a bunch of clothes, and me and him took off walking in the snow. And uh, went down to the river, a bunch of big icebergs floating down the river. We decided we were going to try to to ride on an iceberg, being dumb little kids, so found a big one come up next to the bank and I jumped on it and thing wobbled all over the place and uh, jumped off of it, waited for a bigger one to come and me and him ended up getting on an iceberg, floated down the side of the river on a on an iceberg. We figured out we were going to get killed so the next time we got up close to the bank we bailed off and uh, went up on the levee and I said, hey, I got a good idea. I said, why don't we try to uh, shoot each other with our BB guns? You go get in that log pile, and I'll go get in that log pile, and we'll have a war. Well, that was a good idea to him. So me and him sat there and took pot shots at each other about 100 yards away with BB guns, trying to knock each other's eyes out. Anyway, uh, a blizzard just pops up out of nowhere, and it starts snowing and snowing and snowing. And I told Dave, I said, uh, maybe we ought to go back to the house. He said, yeah, let's go back to the house. So start trucking across the big, long bottom fields. And uh, there was a cab over tractor sitting out in the middle of the field. And I said, hey, Dave, let's get in the tractor and uh, wait till it stops snowing. Well, that was a good idea for him. So both got in an old cab over tractor that's sitting in the middle of the field. And uh, I'm pressing buttons and trying to start the thing. Somehow I got it started. It was a diesel tractor, and it's sitting there running and idling, and now we got the heater going in it. We're sitting in there enjoying the snowstorm. And uh, I'd say about 300 yards out across the field, up over the levee, here comes uh, this thing on two legs, pops over the top of the levee, and walks directly across the field in front of us. Big black hairy thing. I said, look, Dave, there's a bear. Yeah, there's a bear. So. Watch this thing go across the field a thousand yards into a big wood strip where there was a big sinkhole down there. And that was the last we seen it. We thought we seen a bear. Wasn't really uh, in tune to this Bigfoot stuff at all at that time. But looking back, I don't think a bear walks across the field for uh, a thousand yards on its back legs. Um, I guess my next encounter probably around 2015 or something after I'd moved down here to the lake um, I got a nephew and I took him out fishing in canoes on the um, Lake Niangua which is in behind Haha Tonka State Park and uh, we fished in there caught a bunch of fish had a good day I got an old Volvo car loaded up the canoe on the on the roof and headed home took the back way home off of Highway D coming in behind Ha Ha Tonka State Park. We're getting ready to, to cross a bridge. There's some creek in there. I don't know what the name of the creek is, but standing directly on the yellow line in the middle of the bridge was this thing about four foot tall. And um, I swerved to keep from hitting it. It had long, lanky arms and it was covered in hair and its face was bald in the uh, the only thing I can really compare the way its face looked to was a sloth. It looked like a sloth face. And uh, my nephew agreed the face looked like a sloth. And uh, turn around, turn around. So uh, I couldn't find a place to turn around real quick, but eventually I did. I turned around, and I had one of them uh, six cell D flashlights and uh, looked all around the bottom of the bridge and all through the woods and stuff, never seen anything. I think I think what I seen there was a baby one. Um, next encounter, probably about 2018, uh, down near Ozark, Missouri. 
visiting a friend of my wife's, staying at their house. The old man down there uh, is kind of boring. He's got a, a leg missing. He doesn't like to do anything, and I get bored down there. So uh, I took one of these topo maps with me on this particular visit and uh, headed out across the country. There's some place, Swan, uh, Swan Creek area in the Mark Twain Forest or something. I was going to go check that out for the day. Anyway, I noticed I went through a town called Chadwick, Missouri, and uh, I'm a car guy, so down this country road, I noticed a bunch of bumpers and glass and shit shining in the woods. And it's old cars. I said, oh, a bunch of old cars. So I swung around, and uh, there was a driveway there in an uh, old antique junkyard back in the woods. Um, I ended up talking to the guy and let me kind of go through the place a little bit. He said he was only open on Sundays, and I told him I needed some parts for a certain car, and next Sunday I'll bring my tools and stuff back, and if I could get some parts, would that be good? Yeah, and yeah, no problem. So me and my wife load up in the truck. This is before I had my kid, and uh, headed down there. I had my uh, tool bag and stuff that I needed. I need some uh, trim parts for a 67 Apollo that I had. And I had spotted one back there. So I went in the back of this overgrown junkyard, very overgrown. You're not getting any cars out of here. There's the place is very desolate. And I think probably very few people even know about this place. Anyway, I got my uh, car parts out and um, walking back up the hill to the junkyard, to the top of the hill where the old man was. And uh, I noticed there was a section of the junkyard I didn't see at the at the trailhead there. So I put down my tools on the deck lid of a Buick Electra 225 sitting next to a 69 Chevelle. Put all my stuff there, and uh, there was a big ravine, and it was stacked full of cars. The cars are stacked in there 60 feet deep. <clears throat> As I was walking up to the, uh, the car to put my tools down, I kept hearing metal banging on a tin shed on the side of the hill. And I thought it was nuts falling on uh, falling on the uh, shed. As I was uh, putting my tools up there and stuff, I, I seen somebody on the side of the hill. And I'm the only guy in the place. I seen somebody, so I'm kind of ducking and looking through the, the branches and stuff. And now I don't see anybody. And I said, huh. And that's when I put my tools down. I did a big circle around this area where all these cars were to see what was down in there. I came back up to the top of the hill, get my tools and parts, and head out. It's getting close to dark now. My tools are gone. My car parts are gone. And uh, I got a real, like, delirious, wiped-out feeling. And I don't think it was from walking around the ditch. It was like I was zapped or something. Very disorientated. And I'm like, well, hell, I just put my tools right there. Where the, where the hell are they? I know I put them on the deck lid of this car. Now I'm driving myself crazy trying to find the parts and the tools, and I'm backtracking through the junkyard. I know I put them right here. I, I can't find this stuff. I've had these tools since I was 16 years old, part of my first tool kit I ever owned. Never lost a one of them. So I finally I gave up after about 30 minutes of walking in circles down there looking for my stuff that wasn't there. And I uh, walked up to the top of the hill, and the old man goes, God yeah, damn, what took you so long down there? I thought you were snake bit or something. I can't drag you out of that place. What took you so long? And I said, well, you ain't going to believe this. I said, uh, I was down there and got the parts off of the car, and I said I spotted the other car, the ditch full of cars down there, set all my stuff down, did a circle around the ditch. When it came up, all my stuff's gone. Well, there was another old man standing there next to him, and he looked at him, and he goes, Harry Scratch. And I said, Harry Scratch? What's Harry Scratch? What's Harry Scratch, a ghost? That's what I said. And he goes, oh, he ain't a ghost. We call him Harry Scratch. Hey, George, you know Harry Scratch, don't you? And the old man was deaf, and he's like, huh? Huh? He goes, you know Harry Scratch, don't you? You just live right across the road. I don't know the fella. And that was the end of that. At this time, it's starting to misty rain and get nasty. And uh, I get back to the truck where my wife was waiting in the truck. And she goes, honey, was that you making those Bigfoot calls? And I said, what? She goes, uh, I heard Bigfoot calls real loud in the field over there. And 
those two old men, they, they jumped up and they walked out and they were looking in that field. Was that you? And I said, no. I said, she goes, it sounded just like those Bigfoot calls that you watch on TV. And I said, no, it wasn't me. But I said, uh, something took all my tools in my car parts. And uh, I guess that was the end of that story. So I had a weird experience there. Come home with no tools and no car parts. Um, kind of wrote some of this stuff down so I could remember it all. No, you're fine. Take your time, sir. Okay. Um, when the stuff started happening here was right around the uh, COVID time when I realized what was happening here at the lake. And, um, I would say probably 2019 or so. It was a warm winter night, real humid and warm. And uh, I got this car dealership here, and I was taking advantage of the warm weather in, in the nighttime. And I was out here getting stuff done, tires, charging batteries, uh, whatever. I got 40, 50 cars over here, and I'm a one-man band taking care of all this stuff. So I'm out here taking advantage of the warm weather. When I was done for the evening, I... Uh, Walked around the back porch here, and uh, I nap arrowheads. I've got some uh, deer antlers and billets and stuff on my back porch. And a uh, very dead, quiet night. Real quiet, real humid. January, February, I don't remember. Anyway, I picked up a couple of them, and I, I tapped on them. I've seen some of these uh, guys on TV bang on stuff to attract a Bigfoot or something. I've always kind of had a weird feeling around here that they could possibly be here. And um, I tapped it three times, click, click, click. And I just sat there and listened into the dark, vacant woods behind my house. And uh, I got a response. And it was rocks. And uh, the rocks clacked back three times. And I was like, no freaking way. Uh, made my hair stand straight up. So I did it again click, click, and it answered back, click, click. And it's right on the bank on the side of my house, less than uh, less than 100 yards away. I played with it three or four more times, and I said, screw this, I'm going in the house. So uh, I came in the house, and I opened the side window of the house. There's no screen in there. And I leaned out with the, uh, with the antlers, and I clicked again, but I, I couldn't hear anything. My refrigerator runs too loud. I couldn't hear, so... I said, well, here's, there's a Bigfoot here. Didn't think much about it. Didn't even say nothing to the wife, and I went to bed. Uh, probably about 3 o'clock in the morning, I got up to take a leak, and uh, I was done with that. I come out here in the kitchen, had the uh, two antlers laying on the on the cooking stove here, and I slid the window open again, and I leaned out, and I went click, click, click with the antlers, and the thing was less than... Uh, probably less than 60 feet right on the side of my house where I have a garden. There's a down big giant oak tree and the thing was squatted on an oak tree. And as soon as I clicked it, it bailed off the oak tree and stood up, heard its feet hit the ground. My hair stood straight the frick up and I let out some kind of crazy Indian war hoop. Ay, 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 ay. My wife comes flying in here, flips on all the lights. What's going on? What's going on? I'm like shut the fricking lights off. There's something out here. What's out there? I said, I don't know. It's a Bigfoot or something. And uh, the thing was gray in color. It was whitish gray, kind of the kind of the color of a blue healer. I've got a big dust of dawn light here in the backyard, so it lit it up pretty well, and I could see it pretty well. And uh, next day I went out, and I looked for tracks or whatever, but this is rocky, leafy soil, and I seen nothing. So. Uh, at that point, I'm kind of wondering what's going on around here. And um, I had a neighbor across the road. There's a boat shop across the road. Um, Dana came over about a week later. I forgot what he wanted, borrow a tool or something. And uh, I noticed the guy always works in a shed out there at night across the road. There's stuff banging all the time over there. He's out there working. So I asked him, I said, Dana, I said, I always hear you over there banging around at night out there in that shed and stuff. I said, you ever hear anything uh, weird in the woods around here at night or see anything strange? And he goes, like what, a Bigfoot? And I said, yeah, like a Bigfoot. He goes, oh, them things been running this valley for years, like it was nothing. And I said, well, really? I said, well, I've seen one. And he said, well, 
I see them all the time. He goes, yeah, they mess with me over there, too. I've seen their eyes shining, and they like to throw rocks at the shed and stuff over there. He goes, hell, they've been running this valley for years. And uh, that's that's when I kind of became aware of what was going around going on around here. So uh, I started eventually spending a lot of nights sitting on my front porch, and I got one of these listening device things, uh, like you have the cone with the ear. Yeah, the, the parabolic ear. dish. Parabolic dish. Yeah, I bought a cheapy one off of eBay, and uh, that's when I that's when I really heard what was going on around here at night. It would usually start across the road from my house with metal banging, rocks being thrown on a tin roof over here. There's a boat storage place. Um, right at dusk or dark, the rocks would start bang, 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 and it'll bang and bang and bang, and then uh, I would hear a lot of tree breaks, like they're bending trees, and I've got broken trees all over my hill here, so they're, they're probably eight, 10 inch trees that are, uh, you can hear them bowing and creaking, pop, and then it'll pop. And uh, I don't know how many of those I heard, hundred, hundreds of them. I've heard them uh, do some kind of crazy chattering sound, like they're talking, but it's a language I ain't never heard. Real fast speaking language. Um, I've heard them mimic a bunch of different animals, owls, um, just all kinds of different stuff that puts me onto a different story here. Uh, there, there was a night over here, there was some bow hunters that go across the road and bow hunted here around that same area or in that same area. One night a fella came out in a pickup truck and he stopped on the side of the building that's across the road from me and he got out of his car. I was already uh, sitting on my porch getting ready for the action after he left. And uh, the guy got out of his car and he goes, yo, he yells up in the woods and this thing goes off like a horse whinny. Sounds like a horse. Wee and uh, he got back in his car and he drove out and he drove past my mailbox. As soon as he got past my mailbox, it did it again. The, uh, the problem is there's no horses over there. Very loud, distinct horse whinny. That's the only time I've ever heard that. And uh, across the road, I also noticed that they, they were doing uh, like a single cow moo. Moo! And I've, I've also heard that in behind my house at various different times. Um, the structure pictures that I sent you, I started noticing that when Dana told me that he came back over here and I asked him some more about the Bigfoot stuff. And he said, most of the stuff happens across the road from our house on the side of your hill. Me and my wife sit out on the front porch and listen to him pop wood over there. <clears throat> and he goes, uh, usually it's when you're outside working and you got your music playing in your garage. It seems like that's when the most activity starts. And he goes, they bang stuff over there and break trees. And I said, well, I've heard that across the road on your ridge. And he goes, well, yeah, he goes, that ridge is uh, <clears throat> loaded with, uh, with broken trees, too. And he goes, I'll never hunt over there again. And I said, why not? And he said, one night I was getting out of my deer stand over there. And he said, I was halfway down the ladder, and he said, here comes a deer bolting through the woods, running 100 miles an hour. And he said, there was one of those things on its ass, running on all fours just as fast as a deer. He goes, I'll never hunt there again. And at that time, I asked him, I said, is there a lot of broken trees up on that ridge? I hear trees popping there all the time. He goes, there's more up there than I can count. I've never been into this area. I've never gone across there and looked. Um at that time, I started noticing on my hill where he said he had heard all the things. When I would leave and head to town, I kind of look in the woods when there's no leaves on the trees. And I notice there's poles and stuff leaning up on trees. And the uh, next couple of days, I'd go by and it would change. One of the poles would be down and there'd be a different pole on a different tree or some more poles stacked on trees. So uh, I ended up venturing into the woods up there and drove my car up there. There's a service road to a, a road sign. 
drove my car up there and I took a walk through the woods and uh, that's when I discovered all these crazy structures and stuff up here in my woods and uh, I followed them back probably about a mile and you can you can just kind of go through the woods and and follow this stuff a lot of arch trees snapped off trees poles uh, leaning up on oak trees there's a big cedar grove in the back where they've got the top popped out of one of the cedar trees and then it's got a bunch of long 10 12 foot uh oak poles leaning up on the on the cedar trees poles that you know couldn't have fell out of a tree they were they were actually placed there um at time when i was back there and discovered all that stuff there was a, a single oak tree and it probably had about 10 or 15 poles stacked around it i had a friend with me at that time and i said look at that one and when I pointed at it, the whole thing collapsed. And he goes, dude, what's the odds of that happening? And I said, I don't know. I said, but I'm leaving. And uh, that was the last time I'd been back there. And that's a place that I'd like you to check out back in behind me. Yeah, but, yeah uh, certainly. I had another sighting here one evening. This was a couple of years ago. I was moving cars around out here on the front row. I'm right on Highway 5. There's a patch of woods directly across the street. And as I was moving cars, I noticed there's a peaker across the road. There's one, uh, it was right at dark, too. And I didn't have my cell phone on me. Or I had called my wife and had her walk me out a pair of binoculars. I didn't want to take my eyes off of the thing. I figured if I got out of the car, I wouldn't see it anymore. And I watched it till I couldn't see it anymore. But it stood behind an oak tree and kept peeking out, peeking out, and uh, that was that was another thing that had happened here. I had uh, I'd mentioned some of this stuff to some of the local people around here. You know, some of them have laughed at me, and some other ones say, uh, you know, I've heard I've heard stories like that. My buddy's got a place down the road and swears they look in his windows and uh, throw rocks at his house. So he goes, I don't think you're crazy. It just, uh, that's about all I can think of right now. Okay. You said you had a neighbor that didn't believe you? I had a neighbor that didn't believe me? Yeah. Yeah, you were talking about there was a friend or a neighbor that didn't believe oh, you, and he had an encounter of his own. Yeah, yeah. That was, uh, I don't know if I should be using this guy's name or not. They're, they're no, I wouldn't. I just tell the story. on the subject, but uh, he owns an off-road park down here. I have, uh, I've been over to this off-road park. The first one is on Highway 135. They call it the Loop. And uh, riding through there on the on the edge of this place, I notice a lot of these bent trees and uh, broken over trees, structure type things. And I, uh, I had mentioned it to them. And uh, they thought I was crazy. I said, you guys got a Sasquatch in here. Yeah, all right, well. He had mentioned, he said, we did see a bear here one time when we when we lived in the house. And I said, you did? He said, yeah, there was a deer out in the field. And he said, there was a, a bear on all fours chasing it across the field. I said, yeah, you sure it was a bear? He said, it might have been a Sasquatch. Oh, yeah, right. That's funny, funny. Well, I noticed all that stuff over there, and I told him, you got a Sasquatch in here. They laughed it off and thought I was crazy. And then... Uh, he ended up buying another piece of land down here. I don't know if it's twelve or fourteen hundred acres, and started Loop Two. And a close friend of mine ended up running the bulldozer through him, cutting the trails through this place. So I ended up buying a side by side. I followed my friend through this place all last winter as he cut trails into this uh, virgin forest down on a creek. The place is really cool. And uh, I was just kind of kicking around looking for arrowheads and stuff in there. And I uh, started noticing the stuff in there. Uh, a lot of bent over trees and structures and uh, certain areas just loaded with the stuff. And uh, I mentioned that to my friend Ed. And uh, he's not really a believer of this stuff either. Yeah, that's all natural. I said, dude, that is not natural. I said, how does... a uh, I said, if you start noticing all these forked trees in here, got logs leaning up in them. And I said, the root ends are all sticking up in them. I said, how, how is that even possible? I said, those logs were placed in those forks. You can't see that? Nah, you're crazy, Jimmy. 
one day he discovered a, an area down there by a spring. There's a big overhang in there. And um, he'd come back up the hill on the bulldozer. Hey, I found a cave. I found a cave. Where's it at? So uh, I rode down there and checked out the cave. Next day I went and uh, I got a shovel you know, screwdriver and stuff. I was going to go dig around the face of this overhang down by this spring. And uh, when I went down in there, he's running on a couple ridges over. This place is still real desolate back in there and untouched before the trails and stuff were cut in there. I started messing around in the cave and kicking some rocks around, and I heard deafening, uh, like, wood knocks up the valley. Wood knocks and uh, something clicking. And um, I went on high alert immediately because I'm aware of this stuff and uh, kind of spooked me. I said, there's a Sasquatch up in this valley. Uh, I think it was the next day he was working the bulldozer on the hill above this cave and I was back in there. I found a deer antler, a half of a, a deer antler with a deer jawbone placed directly under. Both of them are polished really white on the point of this hill, and I think that's the tools that they might have been using to click. And uh, I ended up keeping those. I guess I stole them from the Sasquatch up there, but that's the the story about that. Well, um, ended up mentioning more of this stuff to the landowner down there, uh, that you get a Sasquatch on this place too, and it's all funny, funny stuff. Uh, right before it got cold here, we were on our last camp out of the season down on the Niagara River, John Boat camp out and all that. And my buddy gets a call from the from the guy that owns the park. He has to go up on top of the hill to get the reception for the phone call and comes back down the hill. And I said, what was that? He goes, well, that was uh, so-and-so. And uh, he'd asked me if you'd seen the Bigfoot lately. And I said, no, what's that all about? And he goes, he's seen the thing. He said he's seen one. And I said, oh, yeah? Well, what did he see? He said, well, he was leaving the park one night and coming out on the gravel road and went over the uh, the bridge and looked up the creek, and he said the thing was standing in the creek, eight or nine foot tall, hairy guy just standing in the middle of the creek watching him go across the bridge. And uh, he said he double took and looked at it, and he said he kept rolling. And uh, he said, I thought about turning around, going back to see if I could get a picture of it. But he said, hell, I just kept on a going. So uh, I guess he's he's probably a believer now or a little more in, the, in tune to what's going on down in that area. Yeah, yeah, very interesting. And you found these tree structures close to your house. Can we talk about them a little bit? I'm really yeah. interested in this arch with the two sticks in between there. It looks like a an X structure. Yeah, yeah. It looks like a big asterisk up in there. Yeah, and a bunch of tree breaks and um, many other structures. You mentioned that when you went back, they were torn apart, broken. Well, that, that's happened this year. Um, over the summer here, well, going into fall, I always look up there since I since I know the stuff's up there. I always look to see if something's changed because a lot of it's right on the side of the highway. You can see it. But uh, I guess in fall, I noticed that the big asterisk one has been knocked down. It's been flattened. And I haven't walked up there and looked at it since. I, have, I haven't probably walked on this hill in a year and showed anybody of this stuff. But the main one, the big star on top of the hill, is now uh, is now gone. It's on the ground. I'm sure all the poles and stuff are still laying around there, but it's been deconstructed or knocked over by the wind or something. Yeah, and I've noticed that with the structures that I find in my areas. They'll come back and tear them down, and I'm not sure if it's because I'm in there taking photos and videos of them or showing people, but I go back and they're crushed. Yeah, I, I thought that too. Because uh, when I used to show people this stuff, that was the main that was the main big cool one right in the right in the beginning here that was the main one the main one of focus that's the one i would show everybody i often wondered if they didn't take it down because i was showing people yeah that means they were watching you when you were in the area yeah i think that's possible 
Okay. So um, I did uh, on that ridge one time. I had a guy in here uh, looking at a car, and this was in the daytime. And uh, I was just out here bullshitting with the guy, and I happened to glance up on that ridge, and um, there was something walking across the top of the ridge, not quite on the top, but it was down a little ways from the ridge, and I double looked at it. wasn't the color of a deer. I've seen a lot of deer move through here, and I, I asked him, I said, what is that? And I pointed to it, and he kind of squinted and looked at it, and he goes, I don't know what the hell that is. I said, I don't either. I don't think it was a deer. I didn't tell him any of this Bigfoot stuff, but uh, had kind of a visual there. I had I had another instance when a customer was here one time, uh, right at dark. This is last fall of this year. Um, had a guy come in here right before dark, evening time, wanted to look at a vehicle that I had out on the front. I went and I, I got him the keys, and uh, the guy was a talker. I was trying to do something else, button up the garage and stuff that I had laid out. I said, I'm going to I'm gonna go take care of my stuff. You can look at the car. If you want to drive it, let me know. When I walked back up here to my garage, I hear this very, very loud woman's voice in a foreign language in the back corner of my yard very loud blah 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 and it sounded like maybe a native american language wasn't mexican wasn't filipino my wife's a filipino i know what that sounds like um there's nothing behind my house there's nobody lives back there just woods and uh really loud just having a conversation with itself i only hear one voice it's a loud distinct female voice so I got to see what's going on back here. So I, I've got a shed in the backyard. I put the shed between me and where the voice is coming from. And I ran and I ran up to the shed and it stopped. And uh, I don't hear anything back there. So I walked around the shed and I said, hey, somebody back there, you need help? And uh, nothing. You guys need help? Somebody in trouble back here? You guys okay? And I'm talking to myself. There's no answer. So uh, by now, this customer's still here. He's out in front. And I walk back across the road, and he goes, who was that? And I said, I don't know. I said, did you hear that? He goes, hell yeah, I heard that. He goes, you got a crackhead back there. And uh, I said, I don't know. I said, it was a woman's voice speaking a foreign language. He said, I heard that. I said, let me get my gun. You got a crackhead. You got some crackheads back there, probably sleeping in one of them old cars or something in the back. So he dug in his truck and pulled out a pistol, and he ended up walking through the woods back there with a flashlight and nothing. Nobody back there. It was one of the latest, greatest things that happened around here, too. Yeah, and you told me earlier off air that there were um, cops with their lights on, and you heard a vocalization after they left. Yeah, yep, this is last week. Um, wife woke me up. I was in here. I fell asleep in the chair, probably listening to one of your videos. And, uh, honey, honey, get up. There's there's uh, cop lights at the end of our driveway. So uh, I got up and stood on a chair and slid my window open here. And uh, I got my parabolic mic out. I'm listening to what the cop's saying. And he's uh, detouring traffic. Apparently, there was an accident down the road and power lines across the highway here. He's detouring traffic to turn around and go out the other direction. So he was out here about 15 minutes or so, 20 minutes, I don't know. I come back in here, and uh, the lights went away. And uh, I, w I was done. I was going to bed, and I I'm a smoker. I... Uh, slid open the side window here and I was going to have a puff or two before I went to sleep and uh, in the backyard very loud distinctive I've never heard this sound here before but it was a roar and uh, it was probably 10, 12, 15 of them it just kept going off uh, my blue healer dog standing at the standing down below the window just staring into the woods with the hair standing up on her back and not saying a sound and usually she's a barker she'll run in into the woods not scared of nothing but she just stood there staring this thing was just uh i could feel it in my chest it was so loud Shara, 10 15 of 
15 times and and all over and all dead and quiet. But it was enough to get the local dogs barking all around here. Dog across the road went nuts and uh, all the other dogs lit up. And this one, this one was just last week. Yeah, so you're still having activity to this day. To this day. But uh, since since I've got this blue healer dog, like I was telling you, I've got a kid. And uh, since being aware of this stuff is the reason I I got that dog. I know they're they're on the ball. Kind of got it to protect her, and watch over her while she's out here. They're buddies. But um, since I've got this dog, it's not as uh, constant as it used to be. It used to be a nightly occurrence, especially across the road from my house. The rock banging on the tin building, the the knocking, the tapping, all that stuff. It, you could pretty much bet that it was going to be an every night occurrence. But uh, since then, since I've got this dog, it's calmed down a bit, but it's it's still not completely over. There's still uh, hit and miss activity here. Yeah, and um, blue healers are amazing Sasquatch dogs. They pick up on their presence very well. They're very protective, and they'll let you know when the Sasquatch are around. And yeah. um, a lot of them, hopefully it doesn't happen to yours, but they, they go missing. I had a friend... His name was Dennis. He passed away now. He, um, yeah, I've, I've seen that video. Yeah, they've they've tried to take in his blue healer, and they took his blue healer that he had before that one. And, um, yeah, they don't like him. We were actually there one day doing research with Dennis, and my friend, the Ozark Harry man, he was cooking some bacon, and those dogs, they just turned. I mean, like, they were showing their teeth. They were growling, and they instantly went up to the edge of the woods. And, um yeah, they were very aware that something was watching us. Yeah, my my dog's the same way. It knows when something's going on back there. And the main spot in my backyard's in the one corner, and the dog always runs to that corner. That's where I've always heard the noise and commotion is all in this one corner. And there's a lot of structures right in that area too. Yeah, the maybe they on the ball. Yeah, maybe they've quieted down a little bit just because you got the blue healer and they know that you got an alarm system now. That's kind of what I'm thinking, and that's kind of why I got the dog. She's doing her job. Yeah. As long as she knows no missing, we're all good. Yeah. Um, yeah, if you can think of anything else, um, feel free to mention it. And um, I want to ask some questions about the encounters that you've had. And, um, yeah, you mentioned that your dad was an avid hunter, and I think you you said you lived by the Missouri River in St. Charles. Is yep. that correct? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, what did he say about this figure? What did it look like? He said it was just a big, tall, dark guy on the side of the field, and he said, at first, I thought it was such and such. He mentioned the name. He said that guy, uh, I don't know if his name was Arky. He said, Arky used to hunt over there in a black snowmobile suit sometimes. He said, I thought it was Arky standing over there. That's why I was whistling at him. And he said, I figured out it wasn't Arky. He said it was just uh, a very tall black guy standing across the winter wheat field from him. And he said he realized it wasn't a, it wasn't a person. It never moved. It just stood there and looked at him, and it spooked him which uh, I never known the man to be spooked by anything. But apparently that one spooked him. He left early that night and came home early with that story when we were kids. Yeah, and you said your dad whistled at it. They typically yeah. whistle back and forth to each other, and it's like a loud, sharp cattle whistle that a farmer yeah. will use. Um, did Did you mention that the Sasquatch followed your dad out of there? Yeah, he said it followed him out. And uh, he said it broke branches and huffed as uh, he was walking. He said, if I would stop, it would stop. And he said, when I started moving again, it would move. And he could hear it behind him. <clears throat> Probably scared the shit out of him. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. And um, the next encounter you had, you said you saw a big upright creature by the sinkhole. What did that creature look like? It was covered in long black I would say black hair. It was a long black hair. And uh, being a 12-year-old kid, we we thought it was a bear. I didn't know nothing about Sasquatches or Bigfoots back then. 
we just thought we'd seen a bear. It just uh, casually walked across the field, came over the levee where the river was, and uh, it it was snowing, snowing very heavy. It was a blizzard. And the uh, thing just walked all the way across a big old giant bean field in front of us and uh, into the strip of woods and walked on two legs the whole time. Yeah, and you said it went towards a sinkhole. Does that sinkhole have a name? No, it just uh, at the end of Junk Station Road. There's a sewer. There's a sewer plant down there now. They've built a sewer plant, but uh, I don't know. You don't even go down a quarter of a mile after you pass the old railroad tracks there. And uh, out in the bottom fields, there was always a sinkhole. It's full of water. The the old guys lived around there said it, it didn't have a bottom to it. It went up and down when the river level went up and down. And there was just a big old patch of woods around that sinkhole. That's that's the uh, area where, where it went into that day. Yeah, that's interesting because here where I had my encounters, there's a sinkhole nearby. And I've just kind of wondered if that's where they're coming from or around that area. You know, uh, getting getting back to that story, um, there's been a my my sisters had a couple things happen down there in those bottoms. Back back in like high school days and stuff, there's a there was a story about a a witch that was buried on one of the bluff tops down there. Her name was Molly Crenshaw, and there's stories written in books, and you can find stuff on YouTube about it. Well, it, it was a big deal when we were in high school to go find and visit Molly's grave. Apparently, she was a witch back in the 1800s, and they cut her body in half, and one part of her was buried on Towers Road in an old cemetery, and the other half was up on top of the bluff. My uh, my sister and some of her friends back in high school went up trying to find Molly's grave in the dark one night, and uh, as they went up there, my sister said a rock bounced off of her, a little pebble. And uh, she noticed that something was throwing rocks rocks at them. And uh, pretty soon she said the rocks got bigger and bigger. And she goes, they got so big, they uh, they scared us so bad. And she said, I filled my shoes with pee. And she said, all four of us took off running a different direction. And that's very close to where that was. And um, back, to, back to this Greens Bottom area, um, a buddy of mine used to come down here and go to this Jacob's Cave, and when he would come down here, I've known this kid since Boy Scouts when I was a little kid, and uh, he somehow figured out I lived down here. He would uh, He's a vendor at Jacob's Cave, and he would come down here, and he would camp in my, my yard in the back of his truck while this Jacob's Cave stuff was going on the day before, a day after, whatever. He had a friend, he still lives in St. Charles, he had a friend that has a nursery or something down there. He grows flowers or plants down in the bottoms. It's a newer place. It wasn't there when I was a kid. But uh, the guy is a Mexican guy, a real nice guy, and I met him down there with my friend Sean and stuff. And I asked him, I said, so you live down there in Green's Bottoms, huh? And he goes, yeah, yeah, we had that nursery at the end of the Cox Hill Road there. And I said, have you ever... Uh, you ever seen a Sasquatch down there? And he looked at me, and he goes, you know about that thing? He goes, my neighbor seen that thing. Said it's a big, black, hairy guy. Oh, really? You heard about that? And uh, it just confirmed all of that stuff that's going on down in that area, and I think it's still going on to this day down in there. My sister claims she's seen uh, human footprints on the side of the Missouri River in the sand that walked all the way down the riverbank that were uh, like 15-inch long footprints, gigantic human footprints in the mud on the river when she was a kid. Come home with that story. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I've heard a lot of encounter stories from St. Charles, St. Louis County, um, Bowling Green, um, Lake St. Louis, and it's hard to believe they're in there, but there's actually a lot of forest even in the cities. Yeah, there is. I think the riverways are the main uh, pathways for these guys. I think there's a lot more of them than people realize. Yeah, most of the encounters from St. Louis are between um, Missouri and Illinois on the river. Yeah, I believe that. Yeah, and um, you mentioned earlier that there was a guy on my channel from Dixon, Missouri that talked about that same cave you mentioned. 
Well, he talked to yeah, that Jacobs Cave. It's a big it's a big swap meet down here. They call it the Pigeon Swap. It's uh, it's like a gigantic flea market, and uh, they have the thing three times a year. I heard that one guy talking about uh, while he was staying there at Jacobs Cave at the swap meet or something. He had an encounter what he thought was a Bigfoot in behind his campsite there, and. Um, that land is very close to where this guy had the the sighting in the creek. That back the the land kind of backs up to the uh, to the off road park down here. Very close, within walking distance. Mm, okay, and um, if you would describe the creature that you saw by Haha ha Tonka, I can't remember the name of the lake, but um, uh, it's called Lake Niangua. You, you've actually got a video about a cop that had found one in the highway or something in between Lebanon and Camdenton. And then he has a story about um, Tunnel Dam. Do you recall that? Yeah, yeah, it was by a crater. Well, Tunnel Dam is the dam that uh, that backs up the Lake Niangua there. So he had seen his sighting, I guess, below the dam. We've we seen ours leaving the area. Um, loaded up the canoes and stuff and headed back out the back way. There's two ways to get in there from where I live. And we went out the back way that time in behind Ha Ha Tonka State Park. And uh, I'd seen that on Highway D and it was standing in the middle of the bridge. And all I remember, it was it was covered in dark brown hair. It was probably about four foot tall, I would say. Standing on the yellow line, long, lanky arms. And I, I remember the hair on the arms was uh, extremely long, like off the elbows. The arms were down to the side. The uh, the fingertips were down past the knees. It had real long, lanky or- arms with, with long hair off of the arms. And the uh, face didn't have any hair on it, and the face resembled a... Uh, a sloth, that's what come to my mind when I first seen it. It looked like the face of a sloth. But it all happened very quick, you know. I was going down the road 60 miles an hour and swerved to keep from hitting this thing. Yeah, and what color was the creature? Uh, it was dark. like I don't know if you call it black or dark brown. Dark brown, I would say. It wasn't black, it was dark brown. Okay. Yeah, I had a guest on the show who had an encounter near Fredericktown, Missouri on Highway E, and that's exactly what he described. He said it looked like a sloth. Really? Mm-hmm. I'll have to send that to you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now I know I'm not crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and you said it didn't have any hair on its face? No. No, it did. its face was kind of gray. I would call the face gray. Okay, so whenever you were at that junkyard you heard um, a metal banging sound and you yeah. feel like you were zapped. Um, could you feel anything strange or did you just feel disoriented? I felt um, just suddenly like I was overcome and just um, very confused. I felt very confused and disorientated. And uh, I felt like I was going crazy. I'm like, I, I know I put my... Uh, I know I put my tools on the deck lid. I, I wouldn't forget a 69 Chevelle. That's where I put my tools, and there's the path that goes up the hill. I put my tools right here. And uh, I drove myself crazy there looking for my stuff. I ended up backtracking halfway through the junkyard looking for my stuff, where I know damn well where I left it. And uh, just very confused and disorientated is the, the feeling I would I would say. Kind of like my energy was drained out, just mentally, mentally zapped. Yeah. I don't know if the thing did that to me or, if, you know, I was out of breath from walking around the big gigantic ditch back up the hill, but normally I can hike for miles and not have a problem. Yeah. That's happened to me one time before in the Mark Twain National Forest. I was way back there on my friend Bill's property and I found this tree structure and I started finding more structures and all of a sudden I just felt really strange. Just the best way I can describe it is just like extreme anxiety, like some type of fear. Or, I don't know, like the flu almost. Yeah. I, I didn't feel, uh, I didn't feel anxiety. I just felt like I was totally mentally suddenly drained 
and uh, just very confused. Okay. Definitely yeah. didn't have any kind of anxiety. Okay. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Um, so the activity started around 2019 at the lake. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. And you've heard wood knocks, rock clacking, trees being broken. And um, yeah. can you describe the creature that you oh, saw I've, that was squatted down? I heard a lot of uh, a, a lot of yells and whistles too in the. Uh, the yells are very bizarre. That it sounds like a screeching sound, like a like some type of bird screeching. That probably is the most common one that I've heard. Okay, can you describe what the Sasquatch looked like? The one that was squatted down, that was whitish gray, like a blue healer. Well, it was big. <laughs> uh, I've I seen the backside of it. I think because it jumped off forward, and. Uh, it was about as big as a giant refrigerator, a big refrigerator is the, about the size of the thing. And uh, to get any more features other than it was it was gray in color, I couldn't I couldn't really I can't really get any features off of the thing. It was a nighttime, and when I clacked that thing, and it immediately jumped off the log and was gone over the side of the hill, like right now. Yeah. So all I can tell you is that it was big and it was gray. Yeah. And I heard its feet hit the ground. Okay. And um, did your neighbors explain the encounters that they had to you? It's all right if you um talk about them. You you don't have to mention yeah. their name. He had. Uh, he said he seen eye shine in the woods, and um, the banging on his building. He said his building had been banged, and uh, he hears him screaming and hollering, too. Um, the wife, I had ended up talking to her several months later one day over there, and uh, she said that she had seen one down the highway squatted in the weeds on the side of the highway, and that's an area where I've noticed a lot of uh, tree structures down, down the road, probably three or four miles from my house. I've noticed tree structures in there, and she said that she seen one squatted on the side of the road as she went by. But uh, as far as any like face to face physical encounters where you could really see what they wore, they didn't tell me anything like that. Okay. Did you ever see I, any orbs in the area? Any lights? Anything strange like that? Uh, UFO activity. Seen seen that my whole life. I have uh, I have not seen an orb bouncing through the woods or anything like that, but I have seen real strange lights in the sky. Okay, I appreciate you for sharing that. And is this during the Sasquatch experiences and encounters, or you said your whole life? Well, I've I've seen a lot of UFO stuff. Uh, I've seen one of them in broad daylight, very close. A big black rectangle that I don't know how flew in the sky less than a hundred yards from me. Uh, there's one here associated with the Bigfoot thing, and this has been recorded. I've looked it up at the uh, at the lake on these Facebook websites and stuff. One night I was sitting out here listening to this stuff in um, a super bright, like pin light with a with a uh, a blue glow around it. Just traveling up Highway 5 on the other side of the highway from a real bright little bitty light with this big blue orb around it. It's high up in the sky. And uh, the thing's leaving a weird trail. It's definitely something bizarre and out of this world. Going up the side of the road, what the hell is that? And I watched it go out of sight. And as soon as the thing went over the ridge and out of the sight, uh, across the road from me was a wood knock big distinct wood knock in behind my house uh, another wood knock answered the other one across the road and that was the activity that night when that weird light flew over yeah yeah there might be a connection there it's really hard to say but i appreciate you say. for sharing that okay and um i've got another encounter i'd, I'd like to mention yeah yeah go for it something that's happened to me I can I can think of a lot of these things if I put my head to it. But a friend of mine owned some property down in Crocker. This is uh, I was telling you about the other friend of mine that had seen one face to face. 
they've got a farm down in Crocker, and we've got a deer hunt cabin down there on the on the farm. And this has probably been about ten years ago. He uh, lived up in St. Louis at the time, and was going to come down to the farm where Dad was living at the time. You want to go down to the farm this weekend and goof off? Yeah, yeah. He goes, why don't you get down there and go get the keys from the old man at the house and unlock the cabin over there and get the heater going and turn on the well and get the water and everything running. And he goes, I'll be down there later. And I said, okay. So I went over there early, got the keys, headed over to the uh, the hut. That's what they call it, the hut. And uh, we got the pump running and water going and hot water heater and all that stuff fired up. And I went out on the front porch. There's like a, a lean-to over the front porch, and there's two picnic tables sitting up underneath this thing. It's an old German barn converted into a, to a two-story hunting cabin. Uh, got in the back of my car, and I got out of beer, and I was sitting on the table waiting for my buddy to pop the beer. And uh, bang on the tin roof of the building, and click, 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 click. Rock falls off, and it lands. It, it uh, lands above my head on the flat part where the tin is. I didn't at this time realize it was rocks. There's a big oak tree on the end of this, and I thought it's dropping nuts. I'm sitting there, and the nuts are falling, sipping on my beer, and bang again, and bang, and clink, 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 and then stop on the top of the roof. Well, here comes another one, bang, and clink, 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 clink down the roof. And this time it rolled off the edge of the flat roof right where I was sitting, and it landed right in front of my feet. And it wasn't a nut. It was a rock. And I said, uh, okay, this this place butts up right to the edge of the woods. I mean, we got 50 feet between the cabin and then vast woods right next to it where everybody parks their car. And I said, okay, smart ass. I thought it's one of my friends or deer hunt buddies or whatever. Or my buddy Greg playing a trick on me. I said, uh, better come out of the woods, or I said, you're going to get a bunch of lead. And uh, the rock clicking, or the rock dropping stopped. And uh, I said, okay, come out. It's real funny, funny game. So I went in the back of my car and I had a 22 um, old 552 Speedmaster tube fed automatic 22. And I slid the tube full of bullets, and I said, this is your last chance. You're going to get hot lead. And I sprayed into the woods, and uh, nobody spoke up or anything, so I loaded it up again and sprayed into the woods, and all the rock clicking on the roof stopped at that time. And uh, since then, this, this ridge over there would be a spot that I'd like to take you to and show you what's going on over there. We've counted 60 structures on that particular hill. And there's a lot of weird stuff that's happened over there over the years. Yeah. And you mentioned that you saw one peeking out behind a tree. Did you happen to yeah. um, see what it looked like? Uh, just uh, taller than normal, dark figure. And like I mentioned, I was moving cars out on the front row, um, reshuffling the cars around, and it was right at evening time. And I noticed across the road, there's a little patch of woods directly across the road. I noticed somebody weaving back and forth from a tree, looking at me, watching me. And uh, when I spotted it, I knew what it was. It wasn't nobody. It was one of them things. So uh, I didn't have my cell phone on me. I just sat there and I, I watched the thing. Otherwise, I would have had my wife bring out some binoculars and tried to get a better look at it right before dark. But I watched the thing till I couldn't see it no more. I sat in the car probably about 30 minutes as it kept weaving and peeking from behind a tree. Okay. Um, and um, you mentioned that there's a Native American presence there. There, You find arrowheads? Um, yeah, I've, I've found a couple of them here. I haven't really looked for them here. This isn't the prime spot, but I have found a couple of them, like laying around in my driveway and stuff, in the bare dirt spots here. Yeah, but uh, the other area down the road in this park, where I where I have found arrowheads and stuff, I believe there's a campsite on top of this ridge. That's where I notice most of the structures at are are around the Indian sites, and I've I've noticed that in other spots too. I'm kind of an arrowhead hunter guy, and over the years I've noticed there's a lot of uh, structure type things around undisturbed 
Indian sites. It's like they're attracted to those areas or something. Have you noticed that? Yeah, a lot of um, my big research areas, I find um, Native American artifacts, and they were certainly around those areas just because of like the Merrimack River and things like that. Um, you mentioned earlier off air that down here where I'm at in Crawford County that there was an encounter by a bass. Yeah, well, it was. It, yeah, I guess it was an encounter. My uh, uncle told us it was a bear. But, um, back in behind Bass Canoe Rental, we had uh, we had a cabin back there when we were kids. My grandparents had a, a cabin back in, at that time, it was called Clark's National Forest. And uh, it's backed up to the Cotaway River. It was a 400-acre piece of property backed up to the National Forest. And my dad and my uncles and stuff would all go down there deer hunt back in this, back in the 60s and 70s and stuff when they were kids. And uh, my dad come home from that trip telling uh, telling us kids when we were kids in the 70s that Uncle Jerry seen a bear while he was hunting. And uh, he seen a bear and it scared the hell out of him. And we, after that, next time we seen our uncle, we had to ask him about the bear. He said, yeah, I seen a bear walk down the hill towards my stand. And he said, if that son of a bitch would have turned around, I'd have blood it full of holes. And my dad said he came running back and wouldn't go back out that day. Wouldn't go back out the rest of the trip. His hunting trip was over. So I questioned whether he really seen a bear. My Dad was telling me it was a bear to keep us kids calm down. Yeah, and there's a lot of tree structures around that area too. There is. I've been back uh, recently in the past couple of years to show my wife, you know, where our cabin and stuff used to be when we were kids, and the the ridges in there are loaded with the stuff. Very easy to see. Yeah, it's all over the place. Um, so what are our plans for the future? Do you want me to come up there, do some research and stay up there for a couple of days? Yeah. Yeah. That'd be great. I could show you around what's going on around here. And, um, I've spotted a lot of this stuff back here on these endless gravel roads. I've got a lot of areas pinpointed where I see structures. Um, just weird, bizarre stuff. Some of it's even right down here on a local boat ramp main conservation boat ramp right next to where everybody parks and parties all summer long and the woods down here are full of it too it's pretty bizarre there's a lot of activity around in this area yeah if um, you're willing to open your eyes and see it yeah maybe where they're entertainment and like the ozarks is the perfect place for that with all the people partying playing yeah. loud music and uh, enjoying the lake cooking food I, I can show you a spot that I think is an observation point near uh, near one of the big bars down here on this side of the lake. Yeah. There's yeah. a gigantic campground there, and there's a big flat hilltop overlooking this entire campground, and there's all kinds of structures and stuff right on the point. Very easy to look right directly into the campground. Yeah, that'd be excellent. When I come up, I'll bring my cameras, my thermal device, the parabolic dish, and um, the audio recorders, and we'll see what we can get. Hopefully, we can find some new sign, and you can show me where you've found sign in the past. Okay. Yeah, most most of this. Well, I haven't taken a walk behind my house, and I haven't been back there in a couple of years. So I do see some fresh sign from my fence right across my fence back here. I don't know. Uh, I can't guarantee you anything's going to be fresh, fresh, but I, I still believe there is stuff going on back here. And like I said, I haven't recently looked. Okay. Yeah, the weather's supposed to get nasty this um, coming week, but um, whenever it clears up, I'd like to go up there and visit as soon as possible. Okay. Yeah, that'd be great. Just keep in touch with me and I'll, I'll give you the grand tour and tell you anything else that I can think of. And trust me, my mind's full of this stuff. It's Once it's in there, you can't get rid of it very aware you're more it seems like you're more aware of your surroundings after you know okay and um talk with your neighbors your friends that have had experiences and encounters and see if they want to be a part of this video they don't have to show their face if they don't want to that's okay and um i just want to get more content and really um okay put a bigger picture together there you go all sounds good 
Okay. Well, I think we're done for now. And I really appreciate you for getting in contact with me and sharing all that information with me here on the channel. I think a lot of people will appreciate it. And um, I certainly do. Okay. Well, all good. I appreciate you. All right, Jim. Just uh, keep in touch with me and we'll put a plan together. All right. That sounds good. And we'll certainly keep in touch, sir. Okay. You have a good day. Yeah, you too. And you take care of yourself. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. All right, Jim, thank you very much for sharing your encounters with me. And I know that wasn't easy. I know that you were probably nervous talking to me and sharing all these experiences with everyone, but it was the same way for me whenever I got on Bigfoot Odyssey. I remember at the end of the interview, my shirt was stuck to my chest just because I was sweating so much. And yeah, it was really hard to talk about. And people think it's funny that we get on these shows and talk about Bigfoot because they don't believe, but they don't understand how hard it is and what we go through to um, open up about this topic. I really enjoyed listening to all these encounters, especially since it's from my home state and the description of the sloth. I've heard that before and um, they're out there guys. It makes me wonder if it's something else other than Bigfoot, just because people have seen short nosed bears, mammoths, people claim to have seen dinosaurs such as like Loch Ness, raptors, things like that. And um, Nambimbe in Africa. So you never know, there's probably other things out there and um, it may not just be flesh and blood. There may be alternate universes, parallel universes, dimensions, portals, and um, yeah. They're flesh and blood guys, but we have to be more open-minded to what is out there. But yeah, me and Jim plan on getting out in the brush. He's going to let me camp out at his place. He's got a camper. And as soon as the weather clears up, I'm going to get out there, take up all my gear, and we're going to have a lot of fun, guys. And hopefully, you're going to be able to see the journey. But yeah, that's all I have for today. And I appreciate every single one of you for listening today. And it really means a lot. Thank you, everyone. God bless and take care.